All right, once again, welcome to today's session. Today, we're gonna to have a webinar based around employee accountability using metrics motivation. And I'll get into what that means and what that looks like across your organization or various organizations. Once again, my name is Michael Watkins with Competitive Solutions. I'm the Senior Director of IT. So today I'll be running you guys through the different opportunities and different communications within your different systems that are out there, right? So we all have different tools, we all have big goals to achieve, and we have employees that are the key to our success. So let's go ahead and get started. Companies today, right? Everyone that's on the call today works in some type of form or capacity, whether you own your own business or you're employed to someone directly or you're part of a team. Now, with everything that has changed over the past year, a lot of teams are now remote in different areas of the world or different places or working in a space that they're not used to in a team environment. So let's talk a little more about companies today. So these are things that we see today across different organizations. One, you guys have the talented staff. Right. You have some great folks that are intelligent, that works for your teams that's out there and your different departments. You have a way to track some type of data. So whether you're a manufacturing industry or biopharma or even banking or whatever it may be, you are tracking some type of data somewhere, whether you use something as simple as Excel or some people actually still put stuff on paper or some people have complex systems out there to track different things. Or you have different machines out there that are running and performing all these data analytics for you. And then the last thing is you have tasks that need to be completed. So, of course, we have the data. We've been tracking with our machines. We got the employees and the staffs to help run that. We also have tasks that need to be completed. So in order to get this all done and completed in a timely fashion, there has to be things in place with your teams and your organization to make this successful, right? So most companies do have these three things. I can safely say that majority that are on the call today and people that are not as well have at least these three different things in place. Now, some of you might argue not all our staff is talented, right? And that's to each his own, right? You do have some people that are part of your teams that aren't fully engaged as you would like them to be or there's different situations where you and a person might not get along, right? That's people politics. Anywhere you go, you'll deal with that. You have different tools, as I mentioned, tracking across the organizations. And then you have different tasks that need to be completed. So you have various amounts of data and different insights along with your people. So that's kind of a lot to manage as a core system, not to mention all your different tools that you're using out there. So. Most companies do not do the following. Now, some of you may, but most companies we see and I see personally do not do this today. They have talented staff, but they're not in the right roles. All right. We've all been in experience before when we have a manager. He or she has been employed or they have been promoted to the next level. That person may be great with data or doing whatever they're doing in their area but they might not be a great people person, right? And that can also cause conflict there as well. Or you just have someone that doesn't have the experience or they're still learning. So there's different variables that come into play for this, but this is one of the things we see. A way to see the actions with the data. Now, most of your systems out there is gonna be strictly data, okay? Excel. You have a spreadsheet showing me the current trends of the last week or the last day or the last month or even last quarter and so forth, right? Then you also see with different details, a machine that can be running pulling data, maybe volume, right? It could be the number of widgets that came out of this machine that needs to go into this box. We're tracking that information, but the key is how are the two tied to the actions? Meaning the operator, he or she, is supposed to take that widget, okay, let's just say a widget, and take that information or take that product and put it in the box, put it on the pallet, get it out the door. There's a process in place for that. So most companies do have a good process or they're working to streamline their process, but I can't see the actions together for that. Meaning if that operator was supposed to close out, let's say a thousand pieces for the day, 
and they go write it on the flip chart or on the board or AIC board recording this information. But what if they had an action to do something else? We don't typically see those two together, right? We don't see the actions and the data in the same place. Could be a different system, could be a different tool. So how can we see that in place? And then the next thing is a way to measure that success. Right, and this is key, a way to measure the success. People look at success in different ways. One way being I have me working every single day and I just got overtime this week. Some people might say I'm successful because I'm getting more money. Others might say in a lean environment or in a quality department, where our man hours is over, right? We're not successful. So success looks different for everybody, but how do you measure that success across your organization? Okay. So today's call and webinar is really around how to be successful using different tools. As I mentioned, we have several folks that's on the phone today from different industries, different backgrounds. So how do you apply this to your industry or your background or the team or department you're working with? So let's kind of walk through that. The focus is one is going to be accountability. Okay. The big thing keeping employees accountable. That's that's difficult at times because there's sometimes multiple places or pieces in place for things to happen. And then the next component is going to be metrics. So once again, you have your accountability on one side, then your metrics on the other side. How do you take both of those and put those together in a situation that, that's going to be benefit to the team, yourself, and even the organization as a whole. As I mentioned earlier, the key is, can I see the two together, okay? So now let's kind of talk about basically what accountability is anyway, right? At the end of the day, everybody wants to be successful, right? They wanna be able to do what they're supposed to do for their job. And has anybody ever ran into somebody that said they don't wanna be a success or they wanna be a failure? And if they do, they're trying to get let go, release, fired, whatever you wanna use as your term. So the definition for accountability, right, because once again, in different industries, backgrounds, it means something different to everybody. But kind of the gist of it is the quality or state of being accountable, especially when you're obligated or willingness to accept responsibility to account for one's actions. OK, whether that's physically doing something or you raise your hand during a meeting and say, I'll take that. But the big thing is, why is it so difficult to keep people motivated to succeed with this? Right. Because things happen. Prime example, typical work week. You know, I have a plan or list of things that I have to do as a task. Who knew that maybe on a Wednesday, meaning yesterday, I can get an email stating we need to fix this or we need to do that. Right. That takes me away from my original task that I was supposed to do. But I'm still held accountable to complete that. Now, once again, as business professionals, everyone on the call, you know, that is something that we have to do. But it's still so difficult to keep people motivated to succeed when stuff like that happens. OK, so one, we can use performance metrics to increase employee accountability. And that can also be an essential piece for that motivation. Accountability tool. Now, as I mentioned, this session is for you all. We want to educate you on different opportunities out there to make you more effective. You took time out of your day to join this session. So we should be able to give you, or I should be able to give you some different key components that you can take away to say, you know what, what I learned today, I can apply it to my future within my organization, my team, or even at home. It's all around the board. But we're more business focused with this. So simple is the question, is it? So I'm gonna start with the first one, S is set expectations. Very important. Most people do not set clear expectations, right? I might get an email to state for me to make a change to something on a piece of data, right? Pretty kind of self-explanatory. Go in there, change the data accordingly to what was specified. Now, if there were further details saying, well, now take that data, apply it to X, and maybe show it on this chart, I wasn't aware that was supposed to happen. So I don't have the clear expectations where I might show up to a meeting, right? How many times have people been in a meeting, whether you're running the meeting yourself or you're part of your team meeting, 
and you get that surprise question or that call out in front of everybody that you had no clue or your leader, he or she did not clearly explain the task. So you're left empty handed on the other hand. Right. And we're all sitting there like, yes, I've been in that situation. I have been in that situation. So. So you quickly scramble, right, to give an answer, but then you're still reliving that the following week because you still got to work through what wasn't clearly defined for you the first time. The second one is going to be I, which is invite commitment. Okay. Now, what do we mean by invite commitment? Meaning if I'm going to do this task and it's a task that I can truly complete by myself, then I'm going to identify, hey, I can do this. I got it. But if you need commitment from other team members, that needs to be identified and you need to invite that. So we encourage during team meetings, if you say, I'm going to take an action, which a lot of times we don't hear that because most people want to get out of that meeting and go to the next. So we want to invite commitment, right? So what I mean by that, as I mentioned, is to take that from different team members where say, I'll take this action, but I will have to talk with John and Paul offline to maybe get this action completed. Right. Not only did I acknowledge the people in the room that so there won't be blindsided, that we can talk after the meeting, not to derail the meeting. Then they're trying to hash it out, because once again, that is a big thing we see as well. Right. They're trying to solve it right there when that's not the time. So invite the commitment. Next one is going to be M. Measure progress. How do you measure the progress? Some people use project management tools. And a lot of times that is great if it's an overall big project with several steps. But if it's a, a short term task that needs to be completed, how do I measure that progress? OK, how do I actually measure that progress? And a lot of times that's just difficult to actually measure that progress because there's no true way to actually see that. So this is why we say having the actions and the data together is very key because you can actually see together. So, for example, if I have the data and it's red. I took an action, maybe another team member or just me solely, and I took the action. And next week, that same data is green. You can see I'm measuring the success. It correlated there. I can go back to the previous week, see what the problem was. I took the action. Now I can actually see that progress by the next week. Okay. So that's how you can kind of measure that progress by seeing the two tied together. Next one is going to be L, which is linked to consequences. OK, how do you link the information or link that data or that task to consequences, meaning if this doesn't happen, X happens. So a lot of times people have actions, but it's a multiple chain or multiple piece action where I have to do this step first in order for this to happen, maybe for somebody else in another department. Right. And I've been to several organizations across the world and I've said in teams and I've also seen it firsthand where there is no consequences, meaning I'm going to blame it on the quality department. Right. And let's just use this hypothetically, right? I'm an engineer. I'm supposed to do something, engineer for something, to get something ready to go out the door. Quality has done whatever. I'm doing my final touch. But there's no consequences. It was my task. I can't complete it. I point the finger at quality as a whole. Versus originally having a task where I might have identified somebody from quality to assist me with this, to actually get this completed. So I'm kind of linking the consequences. So basically, in order for this to happen, it's part of more than one party so we can kind of work together or the next steps to get done. A lot of times we don't see that happening. We see point the finger, right? That's the get, get out of jail free card is I just point the finger at someone. And the very last one is going to be E, evaluate effectiveness, right? So how do I evaluate that effectiveness of this? So if you do all these, I set the expectations. I invited the commitment if it's necessary. I'm measuring that progress. I linked it to anybody that's necessary to get this task completed. I can evaluate how effective it has been for the business. And most people say, oh, that's kind of hard. How do I actually evaluate effectiveness across my organization? It all varies on the task at hand, of course, the team you're working with, the different metrics. How do you apply all that information together? OK. And that simply spells simple. But is it simple is the question. And most of the times I see that that is not simple. And the biggest one is that very first one is setting expectations. A lot of times their expectations is not developed with teams. 
So what we do with organizations, we go in organizations and help teams set those team expectations as a team. And then after you have those expectations set for the team, you can kind of understand the way your different teammates communicate or how you want to receive information back and forth, which entail helps with setting some of those actions. And what I mean by that is, if I have a leader, he or she that is very analytical, what do you need to come with? Data. I need to bring that data to them so they can understand what I need to do. So the task at hand, if I came with the right data, he or she can complete that. Now, if the other person is more, hey, just tell me the task and you know, I'll go execute, you might say, okay, let me kind of give it high level here, but kind of kind of direct them or show them what needs to happen. Maybe it's on the floor, on a product, on the computer, whatever, and then hand kind of hold their hand and help them to complete that. So there's different ways you can do that. But then once again, it goes back to the question, is that simple? And a lot of times, most people cannot even get this far. Now, there's different factors across it that, you know, makes changes and makes things more, you know, heavy or harder to complete. But if you take these simple steps, simple, right, and apply these tools, this can help you get those accountability with the metrics. Now, what does that look like? OK, we talked about all oh, this is great. So how can I see that in a nice, visible, accountable way for my team? And here's an example here. Now, this is what we call an action register, right? Now, quickly, I can see colors, and you can see it as well. I can see the priority on the left-hand side, starting from the left to right. I see the description explaining what that specific task, remember, like I said earlier, setting expectations. I see where it applies to, I'm linking the consequences, meaning linking to the example or the area where it's going to be related to, whether it's that leader, that team, that she, whoever it is, then responsibility, which is key. My name is now associated to something specifically within my organization. Now, this is the key because I personally do not want to see my name next to red. Now, coincidentally, you see I do have two red items, and that's fine. This means I'm working on information. Right. But I have it out there. I had original target date that keeps on changing and changing and modify. You can see the target date there was last year. Why is this still open? Right. I see an action there. I can see the current target date where I'm overdue. I can see how many times it's been extended. Which is that is a tail sign right there. So this has been extended 10 times. Is Michael the right person for this action? Does he have the right team? Does he have the right tools? These are the conversations you can have with your team because you have the proof in front of you. And then I have my additional comments on the last column supporting that detail. So if I were to actually click on that, but I'm not doing that now, I can see the additional comments in there supporting that information. So this, this information all right here helps me do what? Eliminate meetings. Why? Because I don't have to have the back and forth, right? I can see what Seth's working on, Paul, right? Different colleagues across the organization or my core team there, especially being in a remote COVID world at the moment. This can actually have it live here for my team. So this is going to motivate them to keep them accountable for their items. So I can see everything right here, okay? Another way is just to simplify that visualization where I can quickly see what I have, this is me personally, when I come in there, I can quickly see what is upcoming, what's past due, what's future completed and closed in one easy, easy view to see there. This can be my team actions, this could be my actions. So this kind of gives me that visualization to see everything across my organization in a clean, easy way to review it, okay? So we talked about the focus of accountability, which we just got into. And now let's talk a little about metrics, all right? Let's talk about metrics. Metrics is pretty sim simple, right? It's a standard, a system or standard of measurement. So either a system or a standard way to measure something. But once again, why is it so difficult to get people motivated by it? Most people see the metrics as a red flag, meaning I have a metric assigned to me, and if it's red, they're going to come down on me, right? I'm going to get point the finger. I'm going to be the bad guy. And most people don't want to be that person because the red for some people or most people means bad, right? But red can mean where 
I have a goal. I haven't been able to achieve that goal. It could be I'm short, st- I'm short staff, right? I'm missing team members, right? Or I'm looking for roles to be filled from HR, right? There's a, another piece of this or, right? Or it's just a demand because remember, expectations were set higher than what we can do for the amount of team members or people I have in my area. So once again, this is why it's difficult for people to get motivated by this information because they don't have it, right? So now let's, let's kind of look at the industry, like at outlook of everything right now, right? About 20,000 plus have tracking and trend indicator metrics across the organization, right? So on an average, around 20,000 plus indicators, I mean, whether it's email, whether it's your system, whether it's alerts, whether it's incidents, whether, you know, it's a, you know, a blinking light on the warehouse, meaning someone's moving something, right? There's all type of indicators tracking some type of indicator somewhere. All right. About 183 billion spent on analytic software, trying to measure the right tool where I have three or four tools, but I want to see everything in one place. How do I do that? All right. Or I got a legacy tool here that we can't get rid of. And we got this. All right. So all this money is spent on these tools. Only 32 percent of employees are actually held accountable. That's pretty low. It's not the highest, but it's, it's actually pretty low. Okay. Next is fifty thousand dollars plus wasted on meetings. Why? Discussing the same thing over and over again. How many of you guys on the call today have actually seen that? Where I'm sitting in the same meeting or a different meeting, but I just left a meeting. We're talking about the same things over again because there's no accountability tied to it. So we're wasting that money there. And the last one: fifteen percent of companies that keep their entire organization accountable. There's only fifteen percent that truly keep that the organization fully accountable. I'm meaning from the top level down to the lowest level. And what I mean by the lowest level, he or she that's out there turning the wrench, right? Or sweeping up this, they're, they can see the accountability from top to bottom in the organization. And when you have that, that makes that organization super powerful. Why? Because the communication is there. The leader at the very top can see all the way to the level because most of the time, upper management does not know everything that happens at the lowest level because they're too busy strategically thinking about other things. Now, what if you had a way to see all that? That is powerful. So, all right. So next, we want to talk about metric motivation, right? We talked about the kind of the industry. We talked about accountability. Let's talk about metric motivation. So one, metrics can help companies identify who isn't rowing for the team or with the team. Okay. And what I mean by that, right? Everyone has to be on the same frequency, right? On the same cadence, right? Working together to get to that ultimate goal of success. Right? So metrics can help identify those people that aren't doing that. Now, I'm not saying measure each person to say, you got 10 work orders complete. You got to do 10 every single week. We're going to track whether you did those or not. Right? That can be one way, but some people might see that as, Oh, this is, this is, you know, this is not what I signed up for. All right. And the next one is the trick is to identify and transfer cultural misfits without demotivating other employees. So, and that's tricky because the very first one I said, identify who is enrolling for the team. Once you identify, how do you transfer those cultural misfits without demotivating other people? All right. So, for example, say I have a scorecard and I got 10 people, eight people are on the team, two aren't. I fire them. And what does that do? Does that demotivate the rest of the team? Right. Does it make people, uh, you know, fearful, which, you know, a lot of people don't like working in environments like that. So how do you do that? So that's a trick when, you know, you got to look at best way to do that, where the right people for the right roles come into place. Do I got the right person in this role to complete everything I need to do? Right. So that becomes a factor out there. So once we have that identified, we got the right people for the right team. We're looking at all our data now in a scorecard view. We can see the actions, the notes, the targets, which is our clear expectations, our owners, how we're looking at that data, and then also where we're at currently. Having this information together in one place just gives us a powerful message of seeing all those details out there, right? 
So everything broken down by, you can see there from the quality department, from our cost, from our productivity standpoint, you can see what our targets and goals there. The little check boxes you kind of see there, right? Those are our actions. So now I got the accountability piece and I have the data piece together in one place. And what does that do? One, it's powerful because it gives you all the details there. Two, a lot of times this eliminates meetings. We've all been in too many meetings, right? I have a meeting for the meeting to prep for the other meeting, right? And you all have been in that situation as well in some form or fashion. But having this in place is I can see Seth right there, right? Has a target. It's red. 97 is the target. He's at 74. I see there's an action there. What is he doing to that? I can click into that. As you can see, I got it highlighted where you can add an action or add a note to a particular area. So this tells the story for me and give me those supporting details that I need. So why performance metrics for employee accountability can go wrong, right? So I'm going to give you four reasons why this can go wrong, okay? One, the expectations are unrealistic. Just there's no way we can achieve that, right? But that's that's the goal. So that what that demotifies or motivates different employees because they're like, we're never going to achieve that. And you want to put it up on the board for everybody to see? That demotivates a lot of people. The metrics are not related to the role, meaning I have these metrics that I'm supposed to measure, which is not my role. My role is to, you know, organize this, put this, and get it out the door, not actually move this to this area. That's not my, you know. Now, there might be necessary or, or need for me to help assist with a department, but I can't actually tell, right? Because they're not related to the right role. The metrics are not measurable, meaning we don't have a way to track it, right? How do I measure this, right? Percentages and, you know, I'm sometimes I'm against percentages because it's too vague. So what if I see a metric that says 97%? What is that telling me? Okay. Say my goal is 100, 97%. I'm not there, right? But what is that? What is really the details behind that? I'd rather see I had the goal of 50. I only did 47. So that 3% there is where my 97% is coming from. So three items is why I'm red, right? So is that a big deal or isn't? Or what are those? Are those big ticket items? So this is where you need that underlying data and then figure out whether the metrics are measurable or not, and if it's the right way to measure it, okay? And there is no path to success, meaning you have those metrics out there showing the key things over and over again. There's no path to success, okay? So how do I create the accountability culture? There's a fine line between that. You got to increase employee accountability. You have employees to take charge of their own success by hiring the right people, which you know. And then last, motivate employees to be accountable for their own success by only supplying hard data on everything on the organization. And that's one way to motivate people. So if you do these three different things, you can help create that accountability culture. So what are your three takeaway next steps? One, business leader, recognize when organizational goals may not be realistic for your employees to achieve. You have to recognize that as a business leader or a team leader or a team player, okay? Next one, the keys to engage all your employees in creating an understanding objective to motivate them and make your dream a reality. So what I mean by that is if you get your teammates on the same page of what you're trying to achieve, you'll be successful, right? And you have to give them all the details. A lot of times I see leaders don't give their teammates the details, so they're set up for failure or they're not aligned across the organization. And last, by giving your employees the gift of inclusion into your vision. And that kind of explains what I kind of talking about there. Once you have your dream of what you're trying to achieve or your goal, what you're trying to achieve, include the team. Give them the briefing, the updates necessary to make it successful for your teams. Okay? So those are the, kind of the three takeaways from this all. So we talked about the accountability piece and the metric piece. If you have the two together, you can motivate people across your organization. Okay? And my last slide here. Thank you again. I know we uh, we had a hard start for you guys there. Once again, this is uh, the overview, kind of explaining accountability and metrics in this presentation. If you need examples of free metrics out there, we have a, a free library out there at scorecardexamples.com. So scorecardexamples.com. 
And you can see we have it by different industries because you're all part of different industries out there. Kind of see some of the examples out there. If you have any questions there, you can email me directly. All right. You can send me that email. I'll get an email at that at that listing there or you can call me there as well. But we can talk about, hey, how we can help your organization with this. All right. We have it where we do our scorecard examples to deliver those examples for you. Right. We have our online webinars or our seminars or our boot camps to get your teams motivated. Right. So if you want more details around that, once again, feel free to email me there and we can contact you with any supporting details around that. Once again, I want to say thank you again for your time. And if you have any additional questions, you have my contact information there. And thank you again and have a great rest of your week. Thank you.